Hello, everyone, and welcome to MITx MicroMasters program in Statistics and Data Science Pathways webinar number two in this series, as part of this series two. Um, I welcome everyone. Um, I know everyone is joining from different parts of the world. And um, today, I, my name is Susanna Kivarkova. I am a program manager for MicroMasters in Statistics and Data Science. I work closely along the side of, with um, course faculty, assistant director of education, Dr. Karin Chu, who many of you are familiar with, and other members of the MicroMasters team to support the development and runs of the MicroMasters program in statistics and data science. And um, before we start, I wanted to go through the slide that you're seeing on the screen, which will give you more information about how to submit questions. So on the bottom of the screen, we have a Q&A button where you can submit any questions related to the program and Pathway Schools. And you can just type your questions directly into the Q&A box and we will get them as soon, to them as soon as we can. If you have any technical difficulties, please click the question mark widget at the bottom of your screen and that will um, prompt immediate assistance. And if you have questions that are not answered today, please feel free to follow up and send an email to the email address that you're seeing on the screen, which is micromasters-support at mit.edu. And at this point, um, I, without further ado, I will start with the presentation. Um, so as you already know, MicroMasters program in statistics and data science was developed by MITx and the MIT Institute for Data Systems and Society. And I want to give you a quick introduction to IDSS. IDSS is committed to addressing complex societal challenges and the interdisciplinary research and advancement of education is at the core of its mission. And to learn more about the Institute, uh, we encourage you to visit idss.mit.edu. In terms of the program, this is a slide that gives you a quick overview, but many of you are already very familiar with the program. This is a professional academic and academic credential for online learners from all over the world. This MicroMasters program in statistics and data science is comprised of four online courses and a virtually proctored exam that will provide learners with the foundational knowledge essential to understanding the methods and tools used in data science and the hands-on training in data analysis, as well as machine learning. So you would have to pass a set of four online MIT level of rigor, as we like to point out, courses in one virtually practiced set of exams, and then you can earn the MicroMasters credential from MITx. Learners who verify and earn their MicroMasters credential are then able to share that credential in their professional channels. They can also apply for MIT PhD program in social and engineering systems or an accelerated master's degree at other top universities, which include 20 plus pathway schools around the world. And this is just a slide which provides you at a glance view of the program and outlines some important specifics. Um, so there are four courses and one capstone exam, as we've already mentioned. And each course is equivalent in length to MIT semester, which is between 14 and 16 weeks. And the time commitment for each of the courses is also similar to what we expect for the on-campus on students. It is between 10 and 14 hours per week. Courses are priced at $300 per course for verified learners. And there is an option of purchasing a bundle, which is a $1350 for the whole program. edX offers financial aid to learners who qualify. And on average, the expectation for learners to complete the program is between 12 and 18 months. Um, so again, here is the view of all the courses in the program. And I want to point out that there are four pillar stones of data science. This is how we refer to them. So it's probability, machine learning, fundamentals of statistics, and data analysis. And here on the slide, you will see that there is a fifth course mentioned in data analysis category, 
I want to point out that this is a new elective which will be available on schedule in the spring term of 2021. And it is called Data Analysis, Statistical Modeling and Computation in Applications. So please look for it starting next year. And in the meantime, if you want more information about this course, feel free to visit the news page on the MicroMasters site. Um, a couple of words about the capstone exam because it's actually uh, going on in October. So in case some of you are affected by this comprehensive exam, we want to point out that we refer to it as a capstone exam, but as one capstone exam, but it is comprised of four two-hour virtually practical exam. And each exam focuses on each of the courses, but there will be questions that test your knowledge across all of the courses in the program. Um, so how does it work? Well, first of all, you need to complete and pass the set of four online courses and earn the certificate. You would then pass one practical exam and earn the certificate in that. Finally, having done all of this, you would gain your MicroMasters credential. And at that point, you can take your knowledge and skills and apply it into your studies or to your career in the field of data science. And if you're interested in pursuing further graduate degree, there are many pathways school programs that would take the MicroMasters credential that you have earned and embed it into that program. And as you know, that is the focus of today's sessions. Um, here on this slide, you will see the logos of all the pathway schools that are currently affiliated with MicroMasters program in statistics and data science. And I will take a moment now to point out specific ones from which we have representation in today's session. So we have the logo of Curtin University in Australia and in the top row. On the bottom left corner, you will see the logo from RMIT University in Australia as well. And right above that, we have the logo for Reykjavik University in Iceland. And today we have, we're very pleased to have representatives from each of the schools giving us a deeper understanding of their programs. So at this point, I will note who the speakers will be, and I will pass on the floor to the speakers. We want, for Curtin University, we have joining us today Valerie Maxfield, who is a senior lecturer in discipline of computing and course coordinator for Masters of Predictive Analytics. From RMIT University in Australia, we have Anna Monroe, regional coordinator, and Lefan Q, international pathways manager. And from Reykjavik University, we have Stefan Wendt, associate professor and director of graduate programs in the Department of Business Administration. And we have Maria Oshkandote, assistant professor in the Department of Computer Science. And at this point, I will pass the floor to Valerie Maxwell from Corton University. Okay, thank you very much. And I'm very grateful for the opportunity to speak to some prospective students or potential students for Curtin University. So on this slide, you can see our Bentley campus in Perth, Western Australia, and it's quite a beautiful campus, uh, very relaxed and uh, lovely gardens and uh, lovely weather as we have in Perth. Button. Okay, so Curtin, uh, just check the spelling there. It's not Curtin as in the blinds that you put in your windows. It is Curtin named after one of our early prime ministers. And one of his statements was that a great university should look ever forward. And that's in preparing our students. And that's one of the things that we uh, pride ourselves in to make sure that our students are ready for what's going on in the future and preparing the world and improving the world um, and the society going forward using the technology and things that we can apply to help society around us. Okay, in terms of our profile, we have a very healthy profile in terms of teaching, research, uh, internationalization, <coughs> impact of our research as well. So we'd um, 
you can rest assured that when you work with us, you're working with some uh, a very high quality university. Okay, so Curtin is an innovative global university. We have uh, multiple campuses. So we have our um, our campus main campus in Bentley, but I'll talk later about. Uh, we have Dubai, Mauritius, Miri in Malaysia. We have Singapore, and we have a, a regional campus in Kalgoorlie looking after mining and resources. So it is possible to study our on campus at some of those other other campuses that we have, but of course our main campus is in Perth, Western Australia. So we've got very high impact research. Our research gets applied. Uh, we have very strong linkages with industry and those partnerships are used in the projects that students do as well. Um, Perth is a very, um, uh, very, it's a growing and prosperous city. If you have a look at the map, we're on the western side of Australia. So you can see that little red dot there. So most of the cities in Australia are on the eastern side, but we're on the western side. And you can see that sort of brown area is mainly desert. We are very isolated as well. We're about two and a half thousand kilometres from the next big city. Usually people think that's a bad thing, but when there's a pandemic, it's actually a really good place to be. Um, so even though we're isolated in that way, we are in the same time zone as Hong Kong, Singapore, Beijing and Kuala Lumpur. We have very strong linkages up through Asia and that's um, it works where we're isolated, but we're very well connected though, to those parts of the world. And it's easier for people from uh, the Asian countries to stay in touch and be in the same time zone. I realise that people are in many different time zones as we talk in this session. So Curtin has over 57,000 students um, and 25% of those are international students. We have around 4,000 staff. So we have a very high um, staff to student ratio. We pride ourselves on that and we find that the best way to do our teaching is to make sure that we have lots of um, staff to look after each of our students. Looking at that, we have one of five universities in Western Australia, but we have 53% of the domestic market of the local students choose to go to Curtin. So they know that this is the best place to get job ready, uh, industry relevant uh, qualifications and it's also good for anyone coming internationally. So our campuses are in Perth, Kalgoorlie, Singapore, Malaysia, Mauritius and Dubai. And there's certainly uh, the predictive analytics is about to start being taught in Singapore for those who might find that a more um, convenient place to work or study. Okay, we have four faculties and um, most of uh, the predictive analytics is mainly out of science and engineering, although we've worked with the other faculties to bring in aspects of uh, business and law, uh, things in terms of media for making sure that uh, students can visualise their data. And having that cross faculty work means that we have the experts in each area doing our teaching. So I'm in the uh, School of Electrical Engineering, Computing and Mathematical Sciences. That includes physics as well. These are all very much tied into analytics, Internet of Things, all of those um, aspects or those areas that are driving what we're doing in uh, technology and driving all areas of business and science. So it's um, we have the expertise there. And I will mention that we have another um, MicroMasters in Internet of Things that if you're looking for another MicroMasters, that's a very good one that Curtin runs. Okay, so in terms of pathways, we have three courses at Curtin that um, are geared to taking in students that have done an MIT ma micro masters. And the main one you might be interested in if you've done statistics and data science is the Master of Predictive Analytics. So it is the only master's course in Australia in predictive analytics. So we are really about making sure that we have an application of the work that we're doing. We're going to operationalize that. So if you're working on understanding what's happening in terms of an uh, organization, then that might, might be in finance and analytics or looking at res the resources industry and uh, plant operations, you can learn 
the, the techniques there and then apply them to optimise and maybe in real time be optimising the operations of your organisation. Okay, so it's looking at integrating technical and business skills and we make sure that people have all of that background in statistics, programming and the application area. So there's two streams. The first year, I'll talk about this shortly, the first year is a foundational year that's common to all the streams. We currently have two streams available in resource operations, engineering and finance investment analytics. We're looking, we're working on Internet of Things, health informatics as well to go in as being part of that second specialisation year that people can do. Okay. So in terms of careers in Australia, there's, uh, it's been uh, predicted that there'll be 12,000 job op openings by 2022 for workers in predictive and data analytics. Okay, you could go into data a uh, role of being a data analyst or an operation and business consultant. So looking at how you fine tune the operations of an organization and that could be in resource engineering, asset management, finance in other application areas. So as part of the, your studies, you might get to you may get to work on projects with our industry partners. So we have Innovation Central in Perth, which is a um, a partnership with the Cisco uh, to be looking at how we uh, work with the Internet of Things, but also with Woodside, one of our main resources companies, and Data61, which is our government um, science organisation as well. So there are a lot of opportunities to be working with business as well as with research organisations. Okay, um, We do have our main intake in semester one. But if you came mid-year, it would just mean that you might have to juggle around some of your units to be able to complete in the two years. And the master's is a two-year qualification. We expect that people coming in will have a bachelor degree in a science, engineering or business field. The main thing we need is um, some mathematical or stat statistics background so that we know that you can cope with the learning that we have, so but you can come from different backgrounds into our degree. In terms of the English requirement, it's an IELTS 6.5 overall with no band below six. So that's something in terms of getting into most universities would be something equivalent to that. And a yearly fee of around $31,000, $32,000. So there are some scholarships that you can look up on our website. Um, I'm not the expert in that, but that is also available. Now looking at the course structure for predictive analytics, uh, this is the first year which I said was a foundational uh, couple of semesters. So we have fundamentals of programming which I teach as a Python programming unit, business quantitative techniques, so statistics, data management. So it's very important when we're doing data analysis that we are looking after our data and making sure that we keep track of it all and any changes we do to it. And a incredibly important area now is data security. So if it's important to your organisation, it may be important or um, tempting for people to come and try and attack it, or in terms of just making sure you don't lose your data. We then have decision methods and predictive analytics, so then going into doing those predictive models. And then in semester two, we have the first two units, so you can do them in either order and then management and organisational behaviour, data visualisation and interpretation. So being able to tell stories and communicate your data is very important. And data mining, so looking at um, something that if you've done the pathway through stats and data science from the look of the curriculum, you may have already done that. So in terms of prior learning, you may, I've got a few there in bold, so fundamentals of programming, business quantitative techniques and data mining may be ones that you get prior learning and don't have to do, you get um, 100 credits in advance and you may have already done some management units, so management and organisational behaviour may be another one you get credit for. Okay, and the second year, this is one of the streams, finance and investments, you, um, you do another 200 credits and the last one is a 50 credit point double unit where you do a project with industry. Okay, so that's each stream has a similar shape. We have two other master's programs that will 
uh, you potentially have a pathway into. So the Master of Professional Engineering, two to three years duration with four majors, embedded systems, telecommunications and networking, emerging power systems, so smart, uh, smart power systems and chemical engineering. So this can take you from your engineering degree and update it or take you into a different part of engineering or maybe take your science qualification and then update it as well. So it's a very um, interesting option, as well as from the business school, the Master of International Business and Entrepreneurship. It's another two years. So for each of these, as part of the, the agreement that we have with MRT X, is that you can have 100 credit points as prior learning. So if we go to that. So that advanced standing means that instead of having to do 400 credits of study to get the master's, you will have one semester, one of the four semesters credited. So it's 100 credit points, which could reduce your study time by six months, or it might reduce your study load across the whole course to be three units a semester instead of four. So if you search for Curtin CRL, uh, recognition of prior learning, you can find out more information about that. Okay, so this is a picture of our lovely city in Perth and the beautiful Swan River. And uh, that might be a place that you get to visit sometime soon. If you are looking at applying from an, uh, as an international student, you can go to the international.curtain.edu.au website. If you're interested in the Master of Predictive Analytics, you can contact me on this email address. And for the Master of Professional Engineering, you can contact Professor Ian Murray. For international business, business and entrepreneurship, um, it's a bit of a website that you have to look up. There wasn't a direct contact for that. So hope to see you perhaps at Curtin sometime in the future. And if there's any questions, I'm happy to take them. Otherwise, you can just type them in the Q&A and I can type my answers as well. Let's see if there's a question. Okay, so if you don't have any um, statistics or data science, we do make a, a allowances for that. So it may be that you have work experience that you've done over time where you've been doing data analytics, or we might ask you to uh, take up an extra unit there. We don't, it's the same with programming, we don't expect people to come in as programmers, so the fundamental of programming unit um, will help you through that. If you've done the MicroMasters in statistics and data science, you'll be fine for that. So that will, even if your undergrads are not in a science area, if you've done the MicroMasters, you'll be fine. Okay, and the other question, sorry. It's a very small screen. Uh, if you meet the criteria, you will be accepted into the master's program. Uh, we have around 50 students come in each year. It's actually our most uh, most popular master's program across the whole university. And the only one other master's program that comes close is actually the Masters of Professional Engineering. So these are seen as very industry relevant. Uh, we started them a few years ago, so we've had our first two lots of students cohorts graduate and um, they've found it very interesting and gone out to have very good job options. Okay. So if you have studied um, full time for two years, you do actually get to, um, in Australia, you do, I believe you do get to uh, work in Australia if you find employment. So there'll be um, very good opportunities here. We've, um, we haven't actually put a study because it is such a new course. We haven't actually got the statistics on what the employment options or what the employment results are, but, um, the students just tend to um, graduate and then go out. And quite often it might be the, um, the organisation they did their project with that keeps them on. 
associate degree in civil engineering. If you've got um, not a, a full degree, I think we'd have to look into that. But it's also about whether you have um, what sort of work experience you have over time. So if you've been working in the field for um, you know five, ten years, then that might be enough to allow you to go into the uh, master's degree. I'd go to the uh, the website for international and then um, ask the uh, for that specific question. Okay. So the master's program is, well, up until recently, it was uh, a face-to-face -face course based in Perth. With the COVID situation, we've found that it, we have been able to do everything online, so it is possible to do our course online. So, maximum amount of CRL. So I, there is a maximum. I. I think it might be 25%, which is what you get for the for the MicroMasters pathway. It's either 25% or two-thirds that um, you can't go above for prior learning. Okay, thank you for your questions. And uh, you can email me if you have any other questions or put it into the chat. I'll be watching there. Thank you. Can't hear you. Um, my name's Anna Munro, and I'm from RMIT University. Um, we're based out of Melbourne. Um, so the university is the largest university in Australia, um, and we have over not all in Melbourne. We have um, also some students studying out of the campuses we have in Vietnam. I do some teaching in other places like Singapore and China as well. So I'm um, connected worldwide. We have alumni all around the world. Um, we were founded back in 1887, so we have a very long history, um, but we're a young university because we became a university more recently. So you can see from the pictures here, it's very modern. Um, we do a lot with um, focused on technology, design, enterprise. Um, we're based on one percent of universities globally, um, number two hundred and twenty-three in the world. And as I was saying, as we're a young university, we're actually number eighteen in the world for those universities that are under fifty years old. We have very high um, graduate employment rate as well, so number five in Australia. And we have um, really fantastic industry partnerships all around the world. Um, we're actually at number four as well in Australia for our partnerships. And I'll talk a little bit more about that and how it relates. Um, directly to our Master of Data Science. So that's the program that I'm going to specifically focus on today. So our main campus is Melbourne, right in the centre of the city. Um, we do have three campuses in Melbourne, but the Master of Data Science is based out of our city campus. Um, and it's a fantastic place to be because it's very central. Um, I'll show you some images. So here's the the campus and it's um it's very integrated into the city centre. So um, you're not sort of on a an isolated separate campus. Um, as soon as you walk out the door of one of your classes, you're right there in the middle of the city. There's bars and restaurants nearby. There's lots of offices. So we're um, able to also um, uh, integrate a lot with our industry partners that are based right there in the city. Um, you can also see some of the public transport that's going through the middle of the picture there. So it's connected well with the rest of the city. Um, I'll show you a map here. So that's RMIT, the big red um, square at the top there. And we're based right on the edge of the um, free tram zone. So um, it means that you can actually travel around that whole area that looks a little bit like a submarine. And, um, and you can go around that whole area for free on um, our trams. So you can go down to the river and then very nearby there's also a beach as well. So Melbourne's a really fantastic city to live in. Um, the, the city has stadiums, we've got museums, art galleries. Um, we were actually for many years the most livable city in the world. So um, it's, yeah, it's a place we're never really going to get bored at all. So why is it a good idea to study in Melbourne? So there's many different reasons. Um, 
I think it was mentioned just before that you may be able to get post-study work rights. So if you do study for two years, um, you can apply to stay on for another two years to work in, um, in Melbourne. Um, while you are actually studying, you can also work up to 20 hours a week while you're studying. So it's really good to be able to contribute to the cost of living as well. We do have some scholarships available, um, so you can check out our website. Um, there are some specific ones that we have um, for citizens from the Americas and Europe um, that offer 20% discount off the entire master's program tuition. Um, but you can also check our website for other options that we have as well. So I'll start to talk a little bit more specifically now about our Master of Data Science program. So um, in our program, you'll be um, building a mix of skills in analytics, statistics, and computer science. Um, and it will lead you to play a central role in areas such as business decision-making, corporate strategy, and also government planning. And our master is um, not only teaching the theory of um, behind the analytics and computer science, but we're really focusing on the practical side so there's the opportunity to do um, industry-based projects, um, take part in an internship and be solving real world problems as well. So um, there's some really key skills that are in demand at the moment and RMIT focuses on these skills um, when we put our curriculum together. So those skills are programming and big data, machine learning and analysis and professional and ethics. So in terms of the program structure, I've just listed some of the courses here. We have a lot of courses because you can mix and match and um, you can put together your program with um, the electives that you want to do. Um, in the area of programming and big data, um, the first and most fundamental one we have is programming. So um, you, you need to be able to transform raw data to obtain insights and um, identify new opportunities. So we offer really advanced programming courses that are designed specifically for data science. Um, we also have courses in data wrangling, data visualization. Um, can enable you to clean data and be able to communicate a data story as well. Um, in machine learning and analysis, we um, provide a set of machine learning and analysis courses that um, different depths and levels depending on what you need for your career goals. Um, so we have courses in supervised, unsupervised machine learning, time series, natural language processing, um, outlier detection, etc. Um, and then in the area of professional and ethics, um, we see that it's really important that you're not living in a vacuum. Um, so you need to be able to communicate and work with stakeholders using data. So um, we provide a lot of case studies in our program so that you can actually build your awareness um, of how it's used in the industry. Um, and it gives you hand-on experience. So in recent years, we've actually run some data forms um, in, in collaboration with ANZ Bank um, and our students have been ranked at number one in these competitions. So as one of the most recent ones, um, we had some students that were taking on projects to um, use public transport data to develop an app um, to see the best transport options. And some of those students actually gained internships as well with the company ANZ at the end of it. So as I said, um, we're focusing really a lot on our industry connections and our um, Master of Data Science was co-developed um, with the industry leaders as well. So um, we get together with Amazon, Microsoft and a lot of, a lot of other key players in technology um, in order to put together the program. Um, there's also a lot of presenters um, and lectures that are done by um, as well and they come in and they'll, they'll take um, take those classes as well. And then with our work integrated learning, we have a really high focus on making sure that you're not doing theoretical work. It's all, it's all of your theoretical practice is then going towards um, projects so you know what it's going to be like to work in the real world. So we have um, some of the opportunities um, for where learning might be a simulated project. Other ones might be actually real projects. Um, there is the opportunity to do an internship, so it's a double credit internship, um, where you have supervisors and mentors from industry. Um, and then, as I said before, we run other events where we do things like data-thons, um, so that's going up against other universities as well. Um, and then we also run other events where we showcase graduate um, achievements to industry so that um, you're able to then see what um, job, job opportunities there are out there and, and have networking opportunities while you're studying. 
So why would you want to take on data science at RMIT? Um, so as I mentioned, we focus on the practical side of learning. We're solving real world problems through hackathons, boot camps, projects. Um, and we're not just focusing on the technical skills, but we're also making sure that you're getting sort of a, a holistic way of learning. So you're get, taking on those important transferable skills as well so that you can then work in a business setting. So right now I'm going to pass you over to my colleague, um, Cindy, who's going to tell you a bit more about the, um, how the structure works with um, going from the MITx MicroMaster through to the RMIT Master of Data Science. Thank you, Anna. Um, for the next few slides, I will actually show you um, how it works from the pathway and the entry requirement as well. So from MITx MicroMaster to our uh, Master of Data Science, you will need to have your English entry requirement for IELTS Academic 6.5 and November below 6.0, or if you have equivalent like TOEFL or PTE, that's fine as well. So for academic entry requirement, of course, you need to finish the MITx Micro Master de um, program, and also you need to successfully completion a bachelor degree in computing science, engineering, health, or statistic with a minimum um, 60% or a GPA 2.0 auto um, based on a four uh, scale four. So um, this is the MIT Expo, um, units that you need to finish. There are, there are three core um, units and two, um, you have to choose one of the electives. To go into our master degrees, you can be awarded um, four, four ex exemptions. There are three um, core exemptions going to the master, master of Data Science and one of the electives. So these four courses, four courses were made up one semester. So the, the initial program, it's four semester, which is two years. Taking off this one semester, you will need to finish the, the rest of the 12 courses. Um, depends on the intakes that you commence. If you're commencing in February intake every year, you will need 1.5 years to complete the program, which is three semesters. If you actually have to start in July intake, that you will take it will take you two years for semester to complete. The number of the courses um, left in the master degree is the same, but because of the um, the course availability and the timetable, July intake will take a little bit longer to complete. So the program. Um, once you finish the MITx program and um, go into our master degree, um, it will take you 12, 12 courses to complete, which is in total approximate um, $54,000 Australian dollars to complete. Okay, if you have any questions um, later, um, if you need to ask more course structures or information, you can contact Anna or me. Um, I'll be your main contact person um, so this, um, sorry, I don't have a picture here, but um, at the bottom here, me, Cindy, um, will be your contact per main contact person as well um, for any course related issues. Okay. And I'll just mention yeah. one more thing, sorry. Just, oh, sorry, yeah. just going back to the previous slide, um, that you'll see a QR code there on the screen as well. If you're interested in um, taking a screenshot of that, um, it's a form to fill in if you do want to get some more information from us and be on our database to receive news from RMIT. So um, you can just see that there on the screen if you want to take a screenshot of it. Thank you, Anna. Any, more, any questions? Yes, oh, wow. actually, we do have a question. Thank you, Anna and Lefan. Um, the question is, how long will the MicroMasters program certificate be honored for application to the master's program? Well, according to the university policy, the um, credits will, um, there's a 10 year um, credit policy. So the program needs to be finished within um, be 10 years before, um, within 10 years um, when you started RMIT program. So anything that longer than 10 years period, it's not recognized. I see. Thank you. And the second question is, how many students will be admitted to the master's program? Uh, okay, I can give you some data. So um, let me have a look. So if I, rem um, I actually checked the data for last year, we have for this program, we have about 100 students per year. 
in back in 20 um 2018 2019 from globally yeah everywhere so this is a very popular program in the school yeah great thank you um and the next question is where are the recent alumni employed what do most students do after the graduation mm, anna do you want to take on this one or yeah, so I wouldn't be able to say exactly where they're all employed. I'd have to have a look into that and get more information. But I do know that many of the students do um, end up taking on employment with the um, internships that they do. Like, for example, the, the student that took part in the Datathon um, with ANZ Bank and then afterwards got an internship through through that company. So a lot of them are with our industry partners, um, and some of them will then go on to work in Melbourne or other parts of Australia, or other students might end up going um, abroad or back to where they their home country, where they came from. Sorry, they don't have any more specific examples on that. It's, it's, uh, it's uh, still very helpful. Um, are there any scholarships or fellowships available, and how do uh, people apply? Um, as I was mentioning before, um, in terms of the specific scholarships, the only one that comes to mind at the moment is the one for um, American, uh, so students from the Americas or Europe. Um, it's a specific 20% discount um, that you have to apply for based on merit. Um, in terms of other regional specific ones, we have some for citizens from, I think, some other um, of the Asian countries, um, but they, they're all on our website. If you, look, um, if you just look in Google International Scholarships RMIT, you'll be able to see all of the other scholarships that we offer. Great. Thank you for answering all the questions. Um, I think that those are all the questions that we have. Um, and again, thank you for your presentation. I think at this point, I will pass the floor on to Reykjavik University um, in Iceland, and Stefan Wendt, Associate Professor there, will take the floor. Thanks a lot, and it's great pleasure for Maria and me to present the MicroMasters Pathways to Reykjavik University. And just to give you a bit of an impression of uh, Reykjavik University itself, we are a relatively small university. We have in total approximately 3,500 students and um, all teaching takes place under one roof. At the moment, of course, it's, it's pretty much an online roof that we are, that we are uh, all having the, the teaching under. But then um, we have still the opportunity to use the university building even in these difficult circumstances. So we are teaching a lot also in the building, stream everything live so that students can decide whether they want to join in the classroom or whether they want to join online. The campus itself, so the university building is easily accessible from the center of, of Reykjavik. Student housing has just been opened, a brand new student housing close to the, close to the campus. And uh, the university is uh, like split into seven departments. Uh, we have engineering, applied engineering, computer science, and computer science is something that uh, Maria will focus on more later on than business administration. Mm -hmm. We also have uh, clinical psychology, sports science, and law. So, so um, interesting portfolio of, of uh, programs and, and teaching and research going on. We focus a lot on, on applied learning, hands-on learning based on real life industry projects, cases, and so forth, so that the students get the opportunity to apply the knowledge to practice what they will need to do later on in the, in the business communities and institutions and, and so forth. And uh, that means that we have, of course, individual work in, in the courses, but we also have a lot of uh, group work uh, to work on these assignments, on these projects, and so forth. And uh, that also means that we build a lot of our activities on collaboration with the industry. So that starts with having uh, some teachers coming in from the industry uh, for enti entire courses or for uh, guest lectures and so forth. Then we have a lot of uh, projects initiated by the industry that are then done in collaboration with our students um, as part either of uh, more applied research uh, projects or actually uh, or actual uh, industry projects that the that the students that the students work on right and our idea is of course to create and disseminate knowledge uh, to enhance the 
competitiveness and quality of life for individuals and society. And uh, we are guided by good ethics, sustainability and responsibility. And that's a, that's an, a topic that we have focused on uh, increasingly in, in recent years to, to integrate that and to, to focus on that. And as I said, relatively young university, so we are uh, ranked 59 on the list of young universities. And as we are very small, um, as we are very small, we rank 18 on the list of small universities, you know, number of rankings there. And, and we have improved a lot our, our positioning in these rankings in, in recent years and are very proud of that. Then uh, just a few words about Iceland and, and Reykjavik. Uh, most of you might know where Iceland is. If, 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 you, if you have not yet had a look at the globe, then you need to go pretty far north to find Iceland on the globe in the middle of the North Atlantic Ocean. The climate is subpolar oceanic climate, so you might think close to the Arctic Circle, so it's only co uh, cold all year round, but it's it's a lot more temperate than, than you might think. We are a very small community, right? So uh, the population of Iceland is 360,000 inhabitants, approximately uh, two thirds living in, in Reykjavik and the, and the capital uh, area. Most people speak English just fluently, so it's no uh, problem to communicate here when coming to Iceland. Um, and then what is uh, um, special about Iceland is that basically all our energy comes from renewable resources for heat, for electricity, geothermal energy, water power, and so forth. And what we are also very proud of is that Iceland ranks number one on the global peace index. And we've, we've learned from many students when we interview them uh, during, the, during the application process that the, the, the peaceful environment and the safety in Iceland is, is one of the important aspects that, that students look into. So if I move now to the, to the, to the business side uh, and what we offer in the Department of Business Administration as Pathways, um, we have, or what I focus on here is the information management and the business management program. We offer a number of other uh, programs uh, at the master level here as well, and there we would also have good opportunities to integrate the MicroMasters. So if you have more questions on that, just please let me know and then we can provide you with more information. In the Department of Business Administration, we follow a, a three-term structure for the master's program. So we have the fall term, spring term, and summer term. And the units or the currency that we use basically is so-called ECTS credits. So that's within the European credit transfer system. And one program uh, or to able to graduate from a program, you need to finish 9T of these credits, meaning 30 credits per term. The information management uh, program is structured into mandatory courses in the first term, then mainly mandatory courses in the spring term. And then you can decide if you want to go uh, a more research focused way, uh, writing a, a master's thesis, or if you say you might not be interested in a larger research project, you're interested in taking more courses, or, and that's now exactly where the, where the MicroMasters comes in, if you want to integrate the MicroMasters into the studies, want to get the credits evaluated, then this is basically a very good opportunity. If you say you want to get the MicroMasters evaluated and still write a thesis, then we will find a way how to integrate the credits uh, into the into the program. And that's something that we can just individually figure out. And um, yes, so the MicroMasters, if you if you have finished the MicroMasters, will be evaluated for 26 credits. And that basically corresponds to nearly one term. So that means that uh, if depending on how you how you structure it, you have a good opportunity uh, after having finished the MicroMasters to finish the program actually in two uh, terms. And uh, Many students do that in full-time study, and for most uh, students who come from abroad, full-time study might be the only option because due to visa requirements, you need to basically be uh, enrolled to, to full-time study. Uh, tuition fees is uh, roughly 5,500 US dollars per term, and that does not include housing or uh, food and beverage and so forth. So that's the, the tuition fee for the, for the studies. Enrollment is in the fall term. Application deadline is end of uh, January for all applicants from outside the European Economic Area. Uh, end of April for students from within the European Economic Area. 
and at, as admission requirements for information management students uh, need to have a background a bit of a combined background in business and computer science um, based on the completed bachelor degree potentially combined with uh, work experience and then the typical uh, english language skills and um, for the business management program as you see basically same structure three terms with uh, more variety in uh, or more flexibility when it comes to electives so it's even um, less uh, difficult to find a good way to integrate the, the micromasters here. The conditions are otherwise the same uh, as admission requirements. You need a bachelor degree in uh, business administration or other fields. If you do not have a lot of business in your bachelor degree, you just need to uh, take an an introductory course uh, to business and, and fundamentals in accounting and finance in the fall term. And then you should be also very well prepared to uh, follow the courses in our program structure. And then I think I will just hand over to Maria and uh, ask her to present the computer science programs here. Maria, I think you might be muted. Yeah, uh, I think Maria is trying to establish a connection. Um, while we were waiting for Maria, I have a question for Stefan. Uh, one of the questions that has come in, maybe um, we can try and answer that. Uh, this is about scholarships, and there is a question mm -hmm. from someone in Pakistan as to whether or not there are scholarships available for Pakistani students. So in, in Iceland, we do not really have an established scholarship system. So in that sense, um, as far as I'm aware of, there are very few opportunities then directly related maybe to to some some industry projects to get support when, when students work on that. But otherwise, I'm not uh, aware of uh, scholarship opportunities here from within Iceland. Thank you. Let's see if we can, uh, we are connected with Maria at this point. I think we're still experiencing some technical difficulties. Um, Thank you for everyone's patience. Um, I think well, this will take a minute. Um, So there is, am I still? 
we can, can still, still hear, hear me? you. Yes, yes excellent. So, so there's one more one more question here. If I see that, um, what kind of special offers for MIT learners? So the the um, the offer basically is to get the uh, close to one term evaluated, right? As as 26 ECTS credits, which of course also means that you would then only need to pay the tuition fee for two terms in full-time study. You can easily at the um, at the like remaining four credits uh, to to one of the uh, other terms and 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 integrate that. So that's of course a, of course a good opportunity to integrate that uh, into the studies. And um, the other opportunity is um, that, as I as I mentioned in particular, if you're interested in graduating with a Master of Science degree, meaning you would need to write a thesis, that we can look specifically into the um, into the um, Opportunity: How you can combine that and integrate the micromasters and the thesis into the into the program structure, um, so that you actually benefit from that and do not need to accomplish more credits than the program structure in itself would uh, require. Thank you for answering that question. Let me check to see if there are any other questions coming in. Yes, at this point, I don't see any. Um, we are still, we were still not successful um, establishing a connection with uh, Maria. Um, at this point, I think I will ask all the speakers who have participated today um, to put in, to use this last um, minute or two to share any additional um, points that you want to highlight. Um, and this will be a good opportunity to make any comments um, to the viewers. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes, Maria. Okay, perfect. I'm so sorry about this. Okay, so let me mm -hmm. uh, try to present my <laughs> our new program here at Reykjavik University. So as of this autumn, we have two new master programs at the Department of Computer Science. And these are master's programs in data science. So this would be uh, that you see here the, the first program, which is a full master's program, which gives you 120 ECTS credits. And um, in both of these uh, programs that we offer, uh, we have the MIT MicroMaster in Statistics and Data Science as the core component. So we decided to really build on uh, this MicroMaster. And that's why the MicroMaster is a requirement for both of our programs, and they count for 30 ECTS units, um, which is, in this case, one-fourth of the program. Uh, so the entire first year, you are uh, actually doing the MicroMaster while also taking some courses at the university. And so we have a couple of um, uh, compulsory courses. There's one called research methodology, and there's another one called software engineer, software engineering management. Sorry, software project management, and those are uh, compulsory for all master students in computer science. But then, on top of that, uh, students also have the possibility to take uh, um, electives. Uh, that are focused on data science and machine learning. So we have, for example, deep learning, we have reinforcement learning, we have uh, network science, and we have big data management. So uh, a big selection of, of uh, elective and um, restrictive elective courses in the program. And in this full master program, uh, the students have an option of doing uh, like a research-oriented uh, thesis, which is then uh, evaluated at 60 ECTS credits. Um, so that would be like a research-oriented project that they work on. But there's also a more applied way where you take uh, more coursework and a bit of a smaller thesis. So in that case, the thesis is only uh, 30 ECTS credits instead of 120. So that's for the students who want to do a more uh, 
applied um, master. And you can see here on the slide uh, some of the electives that we offer uh, in the program that you can choose from. Uh, you also have the, the contact information if you want to know more. Uh, there's uh, my email address and the email address of Austa, who is uh, the, the coordinator. Uh, our admission requirements are more or less the same as what uh, Stefan presented before, so I'm not going to uh, repeat that, but you can read it uh, on the slide what they are. Um, but I want to tell you about our other program as well, which is what we call a uh, Master in Applied Data Science, and that is a 90 ECTS program. So it's slightly uh, smaller than the one I told you about before. And this program is oriented towards people that are um, working as well. So it's only a, a, a past time study program, so you're meant to be able to take it while also working. So it's it's we think about this as like a 50% uh, study pace. And in, in this program, uh, as in the other one, uh, the MicroMaster is the, the core of the program. So it counts for one third, 30 ECTS credits. Um, but then students also take these two compulsory courses that I mentioned before. And they take this applied data science course, which we teach here, and then they have uh, an applied thesis uh, that counts for, for 30 ECTS. So this is a, yeah, like a dialed down version of, of the full master program uh, intended for people that are, are working uh, while studying. Uh, the admission requirements are the same, but we really want to make these data science programs um, available to a, a broad audience, which means that we uh, don't only accept uh, people from uh, with a background in computer science or, or uh, mathematics and statistics, but we look at a broader uh, range of backgrounds. Uh, so if you need some uh, fundamental courses, uh, you can take them uh, from the selection of, of the undergraduate courses that, that uh, we offer. So we can really just assess each and every student to see what their background is and what they need in order to be able to, to start our, our master program. Um, yeah, so please, you can contact me if you want any more questions uh, about this or if you're interested in the program. Thank you, Maria. Uh, we actually do have a couple of questions. Uh, we might have more, but we only probably have time for a couple more questions. And um, here's one. How do you support students after graduation? Any community that I can join? Well, uh, the, the computer science there, there's a there's a community for computer scientists in Iceland uh, that you can join uh, if you fulfill the requirements uh, of being uh, being able to join that community. Um, like Stefan said, we are a small university, and and this is actually the first time that we are offering this data science program. So we don't have a really experience uh, with. Um, job opportunities of, of these students, but I know that in the computer science, uh, the computer science graduates, they all um, go straight into jobs here in Iceland. So there's there's enough jobs for them, at least. And, and, I, I, and I assume for data scientists as well. Um, another question is, the application deadline is January 31st, and when the application is open, and when should be? I expect a decision from you. I um, so I, I, I think the applications are already open. I would, I would assume so. Uh, but I am actually not uh, familiar enough with how long the process takes. Maybe Stefan knows better. So from from our side on the on the. Uh, Business administration side. I mean, the the first step is that the our international office goes through the applications that uh, we receive from uh, from outside of Iceland, and then channels that forward to uh, the departments, and and we go through that. Um, 
Um, as Maria said, now in October, I'm not exactly sure if the application system is already open, but it should open very soon and should open should be open uh, not later than end of October. And um, then, I mean, we try to uh, process all these applications uh, relatively quickly because we know with the visa um, uh, processing time and so forth, that takes a while. So um, by uh, end of February, um, all applicants who have applied before end of uh, January should have a decision, at least for us, from the from the business administration side. Yeah, and I would assume it's the same in, in computer science department. Great. Um, thank you for answering that. And the last question is, um, on average, how much work experience do students in the Masters in Data Science have? So the ones that join the applied um, program. I mean, it's not the requirement to have work experience. We just offer this program to accommodate for people that are working. And so the work experience is, is not the requirement at all. Very similar to MicroMasters and Statistics and Data Science. Um, yeah. Great. Well, I think that um, completes our presentation. I um, want to thank all the speakers uh, for participating today and um, just quickly go over um, a couple of slides, uh, just one slide actually that you will see on the screen where we want to share some of the relevant links to the MicroMasters program in statistics and data science. Um, so there is uh, obviously um, a Pathway Schools webinar series page where you will be able to access this specific webinar video as well as all of the previous ones. And you can see the upcoming webinars uh, for Pathway Schools as well. Um, we also encourage you to take a look at the um, FAQ page on the MicroMaster site, which answers a lot of questions. And then obviously we wanted to share the link to the learner videos. Um, and there you will find, you will hear directly from some of the credential holders in the program. And we are very excited about having this video to share with you and the representation within the program um, actually includes all 195 countries. Uh, so it's, it's very exciting um, is, um, to know as we're gathering this data and sharing it back with you. Um, at this point, I want to um, say thank you again to all the speakers for all of the informative presentations. I think this provides learners with more options. And we wish all the learners success with the MITx MicroMasters program in statistics and data science. And we will see many of you back in the forums. Thank you.